FDM slicing just got easier, thanks to Lychee. Biff, pow, zap, clunk, clunk, ouchie. The company that developed this product is Belgian in origin, and they pronounced the name of their software, Lychee. Out of respect for them, that's how it will be pronounced throughout this video. Hey guys, I was amongst the first to voice the praises of the Lychee slicer on YouTube, I believe, and whilst that was a while ago now, I haven't changed my mind. You've regularly seen me using it with a variety of resin printers, and it has become a popular software choice for many of you guys, both new and experienced resin printing users. And that's the key point there. Lychee is for resin printers, and many of you have written to me, to Lychee, and no doubt to others, and asked if this excellent slicer can be used on FDM printers. And the answer until a few days ago has unfortunately been no. But all that has changed. Thanks to a recent update from these Belgian boffins, from version 5.0 onwards, Lychee is now supporting FDM printers. Accessing this is easy. With your update installed, just open Lychee as normal. Nothing looks particularly different except this hint at the top here. But that changes quickly when you try to add a new printer. Now we have the choice of adding either a resin or a filament printer. And of course, Lychee can handle more than one printer profile for you. As you can see, I've got a few printers already set up here, so adding a filament printer won't upset anything. Clicking this shows a very large selection of FDM printers already available within the database. But it's important to realize that not every printer is there yet. Lychee are happy to admit that this is very much beta software and will probably remain so for a while as they nail on all the various models and possible configurations. Okay, I'm not an avid FDM fan, but I do have a couple of Eligoos that I can add, including the Neptune 3. It's clear here that I've selected something, though it doesn't really make it clear what I've selected yet, but it is a beta version and we can expect fast updates and improvements, I've no doubt. Clicking this shows me the standard recommended settings for this printer. Before you get tweaking any of these settings, Lychee recommends that you create a copy of this profile by hitting the duplicate button at the top. From here, I can choose from a large selection of available filaments. And I'm going to stick with my standard Sunlu PLA Plus, which I buy cheaply on Amazon, as it does everything that I need. And for the vast majority of us users, this will be enough. We may want to tweak a few things like a nozzle temperature, bed temperatures, infill, etc. And this is easy to do. But enthusiasts with far more knowledge than I have on this subject will doubtless be happy to know that by selecting these tabs at the top, they can tweak these settings even further. Though not every setting is available yet, and I'll talk more about that in a moment. With that done, we're back to our usual slicer environment, though our world is now orange rather than blue, making this distinction obvious. Adding an object to slice is the same as always. Just select and there it is. Straight away, we can see my model is red, so it contains a few problems that may affect printing. And the filament version still retains the object repair function that is so useful. A quick click and it's all sorted. As previously, you can move the model around the build area, change its angle, resize and scale it, and so on. So the usual useful tools that we're accustomed to are still here. Now this little chap, if you hadn't guessed, is actually my attempt at making my 2D drawing of my alter ego Vogman character into a three-dimensional object, which I did using ZBrush. When I designed this particular version, I constructed it specifically for FDM printing building layer upon layer in such a way as supports shouldn't be needed. All except this arm, of course. 
If I try to add supports in Cura, my standard slicer, I pretty much have two options. A model smothered in supports or no supports at all. Yes, I can tweak angles, etc. But I don't believe I can choose specific areas to support and just as importantly, areas not to support. Sure enough, we can see in Lychee that areas like the legs, belly and especially the mouth look as though they do need supports. I can of course click auto supports with Lychee and that will also do a pretty good job of smothering everything too. And whilst both slices have been extra cautious here, I'm not convinced this is needed. And this is where Lychee really wins through, as we'll see. We have the very useful island detector. And if I click this, it seems I have four islands. Three of which were on the arm, as I expected. And one is on the belt, which I didn't anticipate. Strangely, this is only on one side of the belt. And this section of the model is symmetrical. But hey, it's a beta. It will get better. With a click of a button, I can add supports to each island. And that might be enough. But I'd like to add a few more to the arm and I can do this in the usual way. By clicking where I want them, one at a time. Click, click, click in that time consuming manner. Now you may have already experienced painting on supports in the resin version. And by holding down the left mouse button and dragging across the model, you can still do this adjusting the support intervals on the menu. However, Leechy has upgraded this idea further. Now, just add a single support, hold down the shift key, and you can see the software is indicating where an entire line of supports can be added. Click the mouse button, and there they are, as quick as that. If you don't fancy going to the trouble of drawing out a line, simply select two supports, and click the Generate from Selection button and a line will suddenly appear. These features are also available for resin printers of course, but somehow for me, it's more impressive seeing these on FDM, where I believe this level of support flexibility wasn't previously available. Now it's worth mentioning here that Leechy has granted me access to the Pro License version of this software for reviewing purposes. But from a glance at their website, it's not brilliantly clear what the differences are between the free and pro versions. I believe on the free version, supports will remain square. Though in the pro version, you can manipulate the height, the length and the width more easily. And also, I can't be certain that all the features I've covered in this video will be available on both versions. So please keep that in mind. With supports added, we can now move over to export and generate the G code. And here, of course, free license users will have to watch an ad. As with all slices, it seems, the moment you slice, visibility becomes somewhat impaired. And in truth, I would expect better from Leechy. But again, it's beta. Maybe things will improve. If we look at this color guide, we can see how these colors indicate the speed of the print at various stages. Similarly, by selecting line type, we can easily distinguish between the model, the supports, the skirt and the brim, etc. And whilst I like these features, I do wish that there was a third option, one that made things just a little bit easier on the eye. Because for me, this isn't exactly a clear image. However, it does remind me of a point that I wanted to mention. I know that these supports look big and boxy. I know they appear to pass through the model in places, but don't be concerned by appearances here. This color guide makes it very obvious that Leechy is cleverly separating the two, making sure that it preserves the appearance of the object. Zooming in gives us a nice view of how the print should look. Though it is important to remember that this is just a representation. But interestingly, if we look very closely, we can see lines of joins running in certain places. And experienced users will recognize that this is where the nozzle starts each new layer on its printing journey. However, seeing them in a line like this 
will spoil the print finish for me. And thankfully, within the filament layer options, we can change the starting point to a variety of positions, including coordinates, if you're clever enough to know what those are. Though personally, I have found that random ensures these marks become far less obvious. And if this is a feature that's available on Cura, it's certainly pretty well hidden. Now again, that's a big plus point in favour of the lychee slicer. Finding settings and even understanding them is much clearer on this than other FDM slicers that I've used. Once ready, you can export your G-code to a file for printing. And here's the result of my first lychee filament slicer test. It looks pretty good to me. It seems I was right in guessing that supports weren't needed all over the model. These pull away easily, just as they should. And with a little more cleanup, this will be a nice print. And for me, the whole process was that little bit easier, all thanks to this slicer. So, is it worth having the lychee filament slicer? Well, it's included in the free download version anyway, so it definitely is. And if nothing else, I'd urge you to try this free version and compare it with your regular filament slicer. I found it much easier to use, so feel free to drop your comments below and share your experiences. But what about the Pro License? Will this slicer be worth the extra money to experienced and pro users? Well, I can't speak for them as I don't include myself in that category. But I'd be very surprised if they weren't wowed by the flexibility and precision available with support placement. I can see this really speeding things up for many. And the ability to add supports only where we want them dramatically reduces cleanup time, which in print farms is going to lead to faster turnaround and with enthusiasts, it's going to lead to cleaner prints. However, it's critically important to remember right now that this is a beta version. All of the settings and features typically associated with slicers may not be present yet. And support for different nozzle sizes, specialized filaments, layer heights and more might still be a few updates away. But Leechy are promising regular updates on the slicer and personally, I'm confident they will deliver. So yes, even if it's not pro ready today, I'm willing to wager that even ardent professionals will quickly find a love for this new lychee feature. For me, it's made FDM slicing easier. For me, lychee has done it again. So that's it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Take care and thanks for watching.